Hi, Kerry here again from uh, Best of Us Investors. Yesterday, I shared with you some articles that uh, uh, James Barton sent me relative to genome sequencing and genome editing and how it's moving forward and how there's tests being done. And then shortly after that, he sent me a interview uh, with the CEO of, um, of CRISPR. And it's, a, it's about a 30-minute interview, and so I've cut it down to, uh, I'm just going to show you about two minutes of it here, because what it does is gives you a real insight as to where they are in this process and what the four categories or silos that they're going after and where they are relative to when this is going to happen. This is very timely because in our last Friday's uh, Zoom meeting, Nick, a lawyer in Boston, asked me, Carrie, how long is this going to go on? How long are we going to have to wait uh, for these genome sequences and genome editing companies that we all believe so strongly in the, the science that we believe in, how long are we going to have to wait until it matures? And I think that was a fair question, and I, I want to put it into perspective, and I think um, the, the CEO, his name is Samath, Samath they, they call him Sam, uh, Cole Carr, me, Kolkarni, Kolkarni, Sam Kolkarni, Chief Executive Officer of CRISPR. Now, uh, I looked at it and I came away and said, this is something I've got to share. Anybody who has an interest in genome sequencing needs to see this. It's pretty deep. Uh, so as I say, I'm going to share part of it with you here today. And then if you want to see the full interview, you'll go to our Discord and, uh, and we'll give, uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a look at it there. But uh, first, this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And I'm pretty excited about it because I think it's going to change the world I live in. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. As the thumbnail said, I sold my Tesla to buy CRISPR. The reality is I, I sold my Tesla to buy CRISPR and Editus and Illumina and Pacific Biotech, about seven stocks that I think are going to change the way I'm going to live. And it's all based on the research that I have done to put me in a position where I think I have some knowledge that the general market doesn't have. And so therefore, I can, I, I can make a, a good investment decision that will yield me ex exponential rewards. The first thing I want to do, though, is I want to show you a comparison of, of CRISPR to Tesla. Look at this chart here. This shows you that little star on the, I guess it'd be on your left-hand side on the bottom. That's when CRISPR went public. And what you're seeing is the yellow line is uh, on a percentage basis, the movement of CRISPR. And then that jagged line is the movement of um, Tesla. And as you can see, starting uh, from their, their original IPO, uh, it looks like um, CRISPR actually outperformed Tesla until this point where I, what I call the advent of free money. This was when the government started throwing uh, checks at individuals at the tune of $1,200 a piece, and then even bigger numbers at banks and and um, uh, whatever financial institutions and uh, uh, relief on rent. And that's where CRISPR and Tesla separated. That's where Tesla took off. Uh, I then show you where I sold it. I was up over 100% on it, and I said, Tesla's wonderful, it's technology, but if I had a choice of an electric vehicle or taking cancer out of my body or taking heart disease out of my body, which would I take? Which would I take? 
in in if they both cost seventy five thousand dollars, which would I take? And even if if then I could not only take the cancer out of my body, recognizing that my mother died of cancer, my daughter died of cancer, my father died of cancer, I'll probably die of cancer. If if I could not only take it out of my body, but if I could have it done to my granddaughters and my grandson, so it comes out of the Grinkmeyer bloodline forever, which would I rather have? Uh, would I rather have a, a Tesla or taking cancer and heart disease and Parkinson's out of the Grinkmeyer uh, uh, bloodline? I don't think there's any question. Then I ask myself, how did this happen? How did Tesla separate itself such from CRISPR at this point? And I got to thinking, well, who is, who's the face of CRISPR? It's, it's Emmanuel Carpentier. Who's the face of Tesla? It's Elon Musk. Here they are. Look at their faces. What if their roles had been reversed? What if Elon was now the science, the scientist behind CRISPR, and he still had his his Twitter account, and he still got up on the stage and did all his grandeur. Which of these would be, would they be in reverse positions? If, if the message had been delivered about genome sequence and genome editing by Elon Musk, rather than an Emmanuel Carpentier, which would you own right now, knowing what you, you know? I don't think there's any question. And I think it's, it's relative to the marketing. And, and again, selling an electric car and selling science and, and medical revolution are two different things. But put them into perspective of which is going to change your life. And again, if we had changed the, not the message, but the messenger, would these things be reversed? <clears throat> I, I propose that if in fact the messenger had been reversed, you wouldn't see Tesla down right now or carpet, um, CRISPR because the message here is so profound and I want to just share three minutes of it, three minutes of the interview uh, with Sam, and you see if you don't agree with me. If the messenger was different, you and I would be all excited about genome sequencing and genome editing, as should be. Watch this part of the interview. I'm happy to do that. Um, I think we're entering a pivotal stage in the growth and development of the company, uh, for those who don't know the history of the company, CRISPR Therapeutics was founded in 2013 with the vision of developing transformative uh, and potentially curative medicines for patients with serious diseases. Uh, we were started with the IP estate uh, that we licensed from Dr. Emmanuel Charpentier, who won the Nobel Prize for elucidating CRISPR-Cas9 in 2021. Um, I in 2020, I think lots happened in the last few years, but uh, all the developments in the CRISPR space have been going at breakneck speed. I think we've gone from a platform with a tremendous amount of promise to being on the cusp of filing a BLA or biologics license application for what could be the first CRISPR-based therapy in the world. This is our CTX001 program, which we're co-developing together with Vertex Pharmaceuticals, uh, where we've dosed a number of patients uh, and the data are simply remarkable. Uh, beyond that, we've uh, grown the company and developed our portfolio in such a way where we have four different franchises, obviously the sickle cell and thalassemia portion. We have the immuno-oncology franchise where we have very promising data for allogeneic CAR-Ts. That could be the future of cancer treatments, both in heme malignancies as well as solid tumors. Uh, we have a regenerative medicine franchise where we have where we're developing organs off the shelf, and we're starting with pancreas where we've dosed a patient already, um, and we have in vivo applications where we send the CRISPR-Cas9 machinery 
in either in a viral or a non-viral package into the patient's body uh, to a particular organ of interest to make the edit that we desire to ameliorate the disease or to, in some cases, cure the disease. So those are the four franchises that made tremendous progress. Uh, we've dosed uh, over 150 patients to date as a company. Uh, we've, uh, we have six programs in the clinic um, that, that are progressing uh, across different indications. Uh, and we continue to make progress uh, on our entire portfolio, both in vivo and ex vivo, which we're quite proud of. In parallel, I think we're, we've built uh, tremendous capabilities. I think we have our own manufacturing facility that's come online now, based in Massachusetts. We have uh, over 500 people at the company, but a fully integrated company with all sorts of functions, fully mature and developed, including regulatory clinical operations, um, translation, uh, biometrics, and all sorts of advanced functions. So I think we're, we've built a company that's you know gaining momentum it's a flywheel effect, and we can, we'll continue to bring more programs into the clinic uh, and prosecute them through the clinic. As I said, if you'd like to see the other 20 minutes of the interview where he gets even deeper into it, and if you have a medical mind and have an understanding, you do not want to miss that. You can come to our Discord, and uh, and you'll find there a a access to the uh we're going to call it the the sam uh crisper ceo um interview okay again i want you to ask yourself everything else aside if if we had only one of these two sciences that we could have in the next three to five years, which would you take? Would you take a cure for cancer, heart disease, Parkinson's, uh, Alzheimer's, or would you take an electric vehicle? Some of you, I am sure, would take an electric vehicle, and that's because you've never experienced cancer. You've never had to kill a loved one <clears throat> or two or three. You've never seen the pain and suffering. You've never seen what chemotherapy does to a person's body. And they eventually die of what is called septic blood. The poison got so bad in her body that it poisoned her and shut her down. I've sat adjacent to my daughter and watched her heart stop beating. I've heard her <gasps> grasp, gasp for air. I've seen her slip away. I know what I want. You can have all the electric vehicles you want. Give me my daughter back. That's my take on the opportunity of a lifetime. I've bet close to $200,000 on it. If I'm right, and I am certain I'm right, I'm going to make the rest of my family multimillionaires. You stay with Tesla, Homer. I'll take CRISPR, Editus, Caribou, Illumina, Pacific Biosciences. You know them. I've shared them with you. If you don't know them, come see the interview. Come see my portfolio and take the ride of your life because the world that you know is about to go away and you are going to see the most magnificent change in humankind in the next three years. You now have a choice. Do you or don't you want to participate in it? It's your choice. But remember who told you Talk to you again tomorrow.